Hey y'all, welcome back to Poplar Creek Farm. It has been forever since I did a video, um, but I decided to go ahead and pick up the camera today and actually shoot a little footage. Um, so it's been a while, so I haven't updated you guys on a lot of things. The garden looks completely different because last time I did a video, I was planting the garden. Um, I haven't updated you guys on the bees, the pigs, nothing. So here's the whole farm homestead update. So garden is going crazy as you see. Um, this year we decided to mow in between rows instead of like weed them. Um, a couple of reasons. I was originally gonna plant like a clover to help with like a cover crop uh, deep rooting, but I didn't get to that, not a big deal. Um, biggest thing is I don't want to leave like open ground that can erode um, when it rains. Granted, it's been a very dry, dry year, but I'm trying to get as much out of this garden as possible. Um, I'll talk about it more in another video, um, but obviously the food issues, the food shortages, you know, I feel are real um, and are going to become even more real in the next um, few months and year. Um, so garlic, you can see some scapes that I had missed, obviously quite a few actually. I've got to get that out, um, actually probably today or tomorrow or sometime this weekend, get out. I've got kohlrabi here that pretty much needs to come out. Brussels sprouts at the end, um, as well as some onions over, but they're so weedy, you can barely even see them. Here's leeks, they're doing pretty well. My entire row of lettuce. Um, this is a heat tolerant lettuce, and did really well for a really long time. We just haven't been great about keeping up on cutting it. I haven't been great at keeping up on cutting it. I was going to start selling some, and I just didn't get around to it. So um, a lot of it's bolting, and that'll be probably be coming out soon, re-sewed with some new stuff. Um, we've got beets here and they're doing pretty well. They're just really slow to take off. We have really hard soil, really dense soil. So root crops just struggle a little bit more. Um, there's some cabbages and then down further is some kale that I haven't harvested at all from, which I need to. Uh, here is some spinach that immediately bolted. And my row of carrots that is extremely weedy, but also um, really, really slow going on the uh, carrots this year, which it is what it is. So this arch trellis I put in pretty late. Um, so I just planted it a few weeks ago, or actually probably a week and a half, two weeks ago. So I've got um, some red noodle beans. They'll produce. I also have some Gajari melons. I don't think they'll produce. Um, I don't think it, they'll be out here. It'll be long enough season for them, um, but it is what it is. Got lots of flowers. I've planted a lot of flowers this year. And if you ask me the name of them, I would not remember them other than zinnias and cosmos. They're beautiful though. But I just kind of sprinkled a bunch of seeds through here and let them go wild. Um, these white ones here, like you can see them over there. Those are radishes that I planted as a cover crop. Um, they've kind of just come up everywhere. They didn't come up great when I planted them initially, but then they came up like after we tilled. Um, lots and lots of tomatoes. These tomatoes up here, these first few are really small. For whatever reason, this part of the row is really small, um, but then they get really big down here and they look really good. These are dragon tongue bush beans and they're doing wonderful. I've been harvesting those. <gasps> Ooh, look at that tomato. That is a beautiful, beautiful blushing tomato. And I don't even know, let's see. My favorite what variety. Italian heirloom. So that's a paste tomato. Although it looks more like a slicer, it is actually a paste. There's a couple more blushing. We've been getting some cherry tomatoes, but no big tomatoes yet. There's a bunch more paste. These are more like the traditional paste tomatoes. I think these are Romas um, or Amish paste. Gold Rush beans, which I ordered these from Fruition Seeds and they are always, always, always loaded. Insane. So I've got a succession so of beans in. Um, so I've got two rows of every kind of bean, but some of them got run over with the mowing, which is fine, it happens. Um, we're still setting blossoms and they don't seem to be dropping them. Although this week is extremely hot. It does cool right back down after this week. Guard miter. This row is green beans. And they are a little big because I hadn't picked them in a while. Um, and my basil all bolted, but the bees love it. So I am leaving it. Look at all those blossoms. 
Like that's insane. These are all different types of cherry tomatoes. Like, that's a ton of blossoms. I think these are the red ones. Oh, and I've got some successfully grew some ground cherries. Just waiting for the first ones to be ripe. I've got lots on there. Just none are ripe yet, which I feel like I check them every day. I've got lufa gourds here, although you can't really tell. <laughs> they are in here. That's a lufa gourd um, plant. I moved them over a little bit because I was trying to mow, but our mower just keeps dying. Peppers, they look absolutely wonderful. I've been getting some like sweet banana peppers and stuff. Um, no hot peppers yet. And no like big sweet peppers, but the sweet banana peppers we've been getting. And I did plant a lot of flowers this year in the garden too throughout. So this is borage, um, which is edible. I tried it, it's a little funky texture, but the bees love it. And so do the Japanese beetles apparently. But the bees have been all over it. So that's why I planted it. These are sunflowers. Um, I think they're a cut sunflower variety. So they're gonna be a little bit shorter one. And apparently I spilled some of the borage seeds or they, um, washed away with some of the rain and came down here. These are my zucchini, which at this point you can tell are kind of struggling, but we'll get a few more off of them and then we'll probably take them out. Lots and lots of cucumbers. So this rose cucumbers, that rose cucumbers, and that rose cucumbers, uh, different varieties. Um, some are like, these are lemon cucumbers, which I'm really excited for them to be ready because they're like cute little balls. <laughs> they're just really, really cute. Okay. And they're obviously like loaded with blossoms. That's a ton of blossoms in there. Um, I'm just not sure exactly when I should be picking them, like what they should look like uh, ripe. Like, is that ripe? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, let me know. Um, but then I've got like Dar, I've got Silver Slicer, I've got Salt and Pepper. Um, and then over further is Sweet Potatoes. I had every intention of getting potatoes out in the garden this year too. I had lots that were sprouted in my basement. Um, and I never got them out. I had a row set aside for them and I just never got them out. Oh yeah, okra. So these are the okra plants. Yeah, look at the little babies. I don't know if we'll actually, if they'll produce a whole lot here, but they're just really special. But basically when the garden was in um, and I wanted to put like a few more things in, I just, it got busy. We've gotten pretty busy as usual with the farm. Um, we had meat chickens going, we had the pigs that we were getting, we had the bees, we had just maintaining normal stuff. Uh, um, so it's just been really kind of difficult to stay on top of everything. And our mower died for a while, it wasn't working. Um, and that's why this got so out of control because we were staying on top of it. And then of course the mower died. And uh, so it's crazy and hopefully the mower just keeps dying on me again. We might need to just get a new push mower, but it is nice to have them um, just be mowed instead of trying to weed in between because this garden is massive. There's no way I could stay on top of weeding it while also going to three markets a week, working two days a week, and having the kids home with me. So, yeah, no. I have not updated you guys on the bees in quite a while. And as you see, I've expanded a lot. Um, so I ended up splitting into, I think it was 21 hives. Um, this is 14, but I did sell um, five nukes. Yeah, five nukes. Um, no, no, four nukes and gave a split to my neighbor. Um, so yeah, I don't know how many that is that I split. But anyways, I had a couple hives that I had to, that went queenless. Um, actually a bunch of my hives went queenless this year and I had to order queens for the first time ever, um, which was kind of a cool experience to be putting queens in. But as you see, some of them, like these were splits, and so they're still very, very slow. They're not quite, and then they of course went queenless as well, so they're not built up all the way, so I can't put supers on them yet, but then there's this one and that one over there that are just insane and putting away lots of honey. This one right here especially has been like stacking in honey. Um, and if you see, there's that little super that looks a little bit different. That's actually a Ross Round um, super, so that's gonna be comb honey, which I'm really excited about, but the bees are obviously very active. Um, I wish, I don't know if you guys, it's so hard. I don't know if it picks up all the bees flying around, but there's so many bees flying around right now. They're flying in and out. So as many of you know, I was very excited to get Idaho pasture pigs. Um, and initially our first order actually fell through. 
just because of some losses that they had on their farm. Um, so then we got three from a farm um, in Pennsylvania. And then we got two from a farm that's actually only about an hour from us. Um, the ones that we got from them though, they're definitely smaller. Uh, and they actually, within, I don't know, two weeks of being here, they were covered in lice. My girls never have had lice. The three that we got initially, they never had lice. Um, so I don't feel it's from our farm. I mean, maybe it was, um, but I do feel that they probably came with it. And uh, so we've been dealing with that, um, treating with ivermectin, and it seems to be resolved at this point. Um, but I sold the first three pigs already. Well, I sold two of those pigs. One of the pigs is for us, uh, it's for my family. And then I got the two boys um, and a local bakery opened up like a little cafe uh, and they want to be able to sell some of the meat in the store, but also use some of it for their own cooking that they do there, the little shop, uh, the little sandwiches they do. So we ordered three more feeders. We might even order more. Um, and then we'll still get the three breeders in the spring, or I'm sorry, in the in the fall, winter time. These are the three girls and they are very noisy. Sunflower especially. Cosmo's got like the deeper grunt. She's the really noisy one. And Lily's pretty quiet. Uh, I know, you girls just want water and stuff. And then there's the boys. They're getting pretty big as well now. It's a very, very hot day. Probably can't even hear me over those girls being so noisy. They want food, they want treats. Always, they're always looking for something. Um, but they are doing amazing. I absolutely love the pigs. I never thought, like, I knew I would like them and I was like, I was hopeful I would like them, I should say, but I love them. They are by far one of my favorite things that we do on the farm. I'd say bees are still like top, um, but just below that is the pigs for sure. They're amazing. They have such personalities. They're super sweet. They're really pretty easy to maintain. Um, I'll take them over chickens. So the, uh, we let our laying hens out most of the time right now just for access to water. Uh, it's easier for them to have access to water because they have a little stream back there. Um, but they don't want to go in at night and they're just a pain in the butt. And then the meat chickens that are right here, they're like, it's a lot of work moving them every day, uh, you know, getting them food and water. Like it's just a lot more work. Pigs are easy, honestly. So these Cornish cross are ready to be butchered. We could have butchered them this past weekend. We butchered half of um, them. We butchered the ones that were in the other chicken tractor. And, um, but it gets so hot so early that we didn't want to keep working into the heat of the day. We get up really early in the morning. So Sunday morning, we'll get up really early and process these ones and they'll be pretty good size. I'm figuring these will be five, six pounds, probably maybe even some bigger ones. That one right there is huge. <laughs> and then we got the last round of chicks for this year. Meat chicks. Um, this is about 80. Yeah, about 80. We ordered 100 and unfortunately a lot came dead, um, but I think it was something with the post office because it was mostly, it was mostly on one side, one box. Uh, so if you have ever ordered chicks, a lot of times they come in divided boxes and one side had 11 dead and then the other ones had just like a couple. Um, so, and then, you know, we lost a couple in the first few days, which is somewhat typical. Um, but something had to have happened to that one side of the box. It wasn't crushed or anything, so it wasn't like they got squished. Um, but they could have gotten dropped. They could have gotten set next to a heater, next to a cool vent, uh, like AC unit or something. Um, who knows? But either way, I, I don't think it was a hatchery's fault at all. Um, and, you know, we didn't want to do any more after this because once those ones get butchered, they'll get, the little ones will get split between the two. And then it'll be get too late in the year. Um, my husband hunts, so we can't really be processing chickens into September, October. Um, plus it gets cold and just not worth it. We still, uh, we still raised more this year than we did last year. Um, I actually sold out of the first batch that we did, like within a few weeks. And then now I've got the new batch that are just ready. Um, tomorrow will be the first market with the new batch of chickens. And uh, then we'll have more, lots more. So this is my little farm update. Um, I know it's been a while since I've done a video, but I will try to pick up the camera more often and be a little bit better about updating you guys. It's so hard 
this is the best time of year for content and it's the hardest hardest time of the year to have time to make content so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today remember we're growing today for a better tomorrow please like and subscribe and join me on the next one